Hey y'all, it's Shay Cherie. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am showing you how to make this double stranded hematite bead bracelet. And I'm also going to be doing a magnetic clasp closure. I'm going to show you the materials and we'll get started. The materials you will need for this project are 18 8 millimeter beads. I happen to be using onyx beads. Eight double hole hematite tile beads. You see they're, they're kind of rounded there. 36 four millimeter square hematite beads. One magnetic clasp. Two pieces of 24 gauge wire cut to 15 inches each. You may not need the full 15 inches. I just like to give myself a little bit of wiggle room when I'm um, cutting wire. Some crimp tubes or beads and also the crimp covers to go with it and some jump rings. The tools you may need are some flush cutter pliers, some round nose pliers, some chain nose pliers, some curved chain nose pliers, some flat nose pliers, and a crimper plier. We're gonna start with preparing the beginning of our wire. So you're gonna take one piece of wire and we have, right, for right now, I decided to change my mind and use crimp beads instead of crimp tubes. So right now you'll need two crimp beads and two crimp covers. Grab one piece of your 24 gauge wire. We are going to string on one of the crimp beads and about a half an inch or an inch down you want to go ahead and fold over your wire to feed it back through your crimp bead and push it up close to the top but leave enough space to feed through a jump ring when we're ready and you're gonna go ahead and close that crimp bead. Okay, we've got that closed. Y'all, still learning how to do crimp beads, bear with me. So you're gonna take a crimp cover and cover up the crimp bead because we don't want that to be an eyesore on the bracelet. And once you've got it placed around the crimp bead, use some pliers to close the cover around it. And you may have to Maneuver, shape it up a little bit. All right, and then once you have the crimp bead closed around there, you can cut off the excess wire with your flush cutter pliers. Okay, so there's one wire prepped. I'm gonna do the same with the other piece of wire. And you're gonna try to make your loops around the same size so that your bracelet will be even. Try. We can always fix it a little bit later. All right, we've got both of our wire pieces prepped for our bracelet. Oh, let me cut the tail off of this one. And then I'm going to go ahead and lay out the pattern for the first piece of wire on our, for the first strand on our bracelet. Uh, 
I lay down my ruler to, to stop the beads from rolling so, so much. So we're going to take our first piece of wire and go ahead and string on our pattern. So it's going to be the four millimeter square and eight millimeter onyx. Four millimeter square. And go through the top hole, whichever, it doesn't matter which side, just go through the top hole of your tile bead. And we're going to continue that pattern all the way through. We have our first row of beads strung on the wire and we're going to go ahead and do the same with the second strand. I'm going to add a bead stopper here. If you want, you could also fold the wire down. A bead stopper works for me. So we're going to continue the pattern and do the second strand of the bracelet. And make sure you're lining up the ends that we already started and go ahead and feed on your beads. So this time we'll start with the square hematite, the eight millimeter onyx, the square hematite. And now you're going to have to feed through the second hole or the bottom hole of your hematite tile bead. And we're going to do that all the way through. Okay, we've got both strands strung. That sounds a little funny, but you get what I mean. So we're just going to adjust, make sure everything is sitting well, and then we will move to do the closure on the other side. As you push your beads down, you also want to make sure that you're leaving enough space um, for the curvature of the bracelet. Oh, I should have put a bead stopper on that part. As I was saying, make sure you're still leaving a little bit of wiggle room, wiggle room so that there can be curvature on the bracelet so that it allows some bending around the wrist. Let's close off the ends of our bracelet. So I'm going to leave the bead stopper on one side. We'll work on this bottom portion, make sure it's tightened up, but still with wiggle room. Oh, not too much space, so we're going to string on a crimp bead. And we'll get it close to the bead and we'll have to string our wire back through the crimp bead and back through the ending bead or well, the ending couple of beads. And you may need your 
pliers to help assist you pull that through and tighten it up a little bit. Okay, I'm going to leave about that much space. And also just finagle one more time to make sure there's not too much space in between. A little space is okay, but you don't want too much space. We're gonna shift that down a little bit, pull our wire a little bit more. Okay, so once you get it to a place where it's tight enough for you, but you still got some room, go ahead and tighten your crimp bead. And then fold it the other way. I do not do this the right way. I'm gonna let you know now. Okay, but do it in a way that you can fold your crimp bead over. All right, so we're gonna grab our other crimp cover. And if it doesn't fit around, try another one, or we may have to smush our crimp bead some more. Oh no, this one is better, okay. So you'll fit your crimp cover around. Close it around there. All right, and then we're going to cut off the excess with our flesh cutters. Be as close as you can, because you don't want it sticking out and cutting somebody scratching their skin. All right, one side closed. Now let's do the same with the second strand. Okay, so we've got both of our ends looped up and ready to attach the jump ring in the clasp. We have our magnetic clasp. You wanna go ahead and separate that or you can leave it whole, it's up to you. I'm going to separate it. So what we're going to do is take our jump rings, loop it through these two loops together, and also loop it around one end of the magnetic clasp. All right, so we have both ends clasped and the bracelet shuts easy. And it slides right off. So here is our double-stranded hematite bracelet. It's a little big for me, however, we want you to get some of the effects. I hope the instructions were clear enough that you will be able to make this bracelet yourself. As always, please like, share, and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And I thank you for watching. See you in the next video.